children of Israel, and we are the children of Abraham. Judah is chosen to be the root. First Chronicles chapter 28, verse 4 says, that Yahweh chose Judah to be the ruler. Now you know that the Israelis that presently in Israel couldn't be Judah because they are not ruling. They are fighting like hell, but they're not ruling. And they don't have all of the land. They have a little tiny piece called Israel. And they call it a state. But see, that's not all that the Bible says Israel is. It's a whole lot of land over there called all of our Bible say. And I don't care how much the Israelis fight, they won't get it. Now, Yahweh chose Judah to be the ruler. So when Yahweh chooses you to be the ruler, then you ought to be ruling. If you're not ruling, there's a reason why. And when you find out the reason why, you can correct yourself and prepare for rulership. Whoever Judah is. The one thing we know, Judah is definitely not ruling. So let's read 1 Chronicles 28 4, see what Yahweh says about Judah. Please. How be it, the Lord God Yudhewafe of Israel chose me before all all the house of my father to be king over Israel forever. For he hath chosen Judah to be the ruler and the house of Judah, the house of my father. And among the sons of my father, he liked me to make me king over all Israel. Now see, see, here you see the God of Israel. Yahweh is his name. Now, Yahweh, in Genesis chapter 1, verse 1, says, Let to in the beginning, Yahweh created the heaven and the earth. So that means the heaven and the earth belong to who? Since he created it, then who can stop him from choosing who he wants to rule over it? Who? You can be jealous, but you can't stop his choice. Now here's a case where Yahweh chose me. The God of Israel chose me. Me. Before, before. Before that was Israel, Yahweh chose me before. I am truly foreordained. I'm the preeminent one. When you study this book, you'll understand who I am. I'm the preeminent one. Now, this, Yahweh is the God of Israel. Israel is of. He derives from Yahweh. Israel comes, proceeds, and comes forth from Yahweh as a part of Yahweh, as an expansion of Yahweh's very nature. And he is the creator of Israel, Yahweh. So when he makes a choice, there's nothing you can do about it. I don't care how many atomic bombs and warplanes people have, they can't stop Yahweh from having chosen me. See, I am already chosen, and they can't do anything about it. See, they're helpless about it. See, I am chosen and talking loud about it. Yahweh chose me. Now, you may not say Yahweh chose you, but I'm telling you who chose me. I know who chose me. You may not know who chose you, but I know who chose me.
Yahweh chose me before all the house of Israel. And before all the nations and the people that come forth from my father. He chose me to be what? King. Yahweh chose me to be king. Period. Over all Israel. And Israel is to rule over heaven. In Revelation 21 12. Revelation chapter 21 verse 12. Well, 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 you just king over a little people. No, I'm king over all the earth. Because Yahweh put the whole earth under Israel. And I'm king over all Israel. So, so, so Yahweh is real smart <laughs> in how he does things. He made, he shot, cut the whole thing, just made me king over all Israel. Then he turned around and made all people subject to Israel. <laughs> Revelation 21, 12. Read. Let's look at verse 10 first so you know what we're talking about. Verse 10. Read. And he carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain and showed me that great city, the holy Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from God, yud heh Check this out. Here is a whole city already built by Yahweh in heaven which is to descend to the earth from it's a heavenly city from Yahweh see revelation you know what I'm saying revelation they come this is a reveal from God, Yahweh himself. A heavenly city. A city of heaven coming from heaven, out of heaven, from Yahweh himself. Just want you to understand what we're talking about here. Well, this is some kind of city here. It's a great city. Now only Yahweh can build a city somewhere else and have it in place and then call it to descend from heaven down to the earth. Well, that's awful man, isn't it? A man that can do that is Superman. See, Clark Kent couldn't do that. He had to leave Krypton. He couldn't bring Krypton down to the earth. See, that's not the true Superman. Here's the true Superman. Build a city in heaven. And say a great city. The holy Jerusalem. Descended out of heaven from Yahweh himself. Well, I want you to understand what's happening here. This is no ordinary city with an ordinary circumstance built by ordinary men. Mm-hmm. What a city! How many would like to see a city like that? <laughs> Only one who don't want to see a city like that is jealous. <laughs> Man has built cities full of hell, filth, disease, suffering, robbery, drug addicts, alcoholics, murderers, vagabonds. Food. He can't get his rockets off the ground and get back safely. Not to think about building a city to out there somewhere and come back. <laughs> well, y'all ain't something else, isn't it? I still want to see this city, man. Well, let's read on about it. Verse 11. This city has what? Having the glory of y'all. The city has the glory of it. And her light, like unto a stone most precious, even like a jasper stone, 
clear as a crystal. A city that's full of light shines crystal clear. Woo! Yahweh. Good grief. What a city. Verse 12, read. And had a wall great and high, and had twelve gates, and at the gates twelve angels, and names written thereon, which are the names of the twelve tribes of the children of Israel. See, all the names written in heaven. Or a city built by God, Yahweh, to descend from heaven has only 12 names written in it. 12 tribes of Israel. No wonder we've been persecuted so. You be wondering why you be hated. All you do is work hard. Huh? People don't want you to vote. When you work, they don't want to pay you much. Don't want you to work at all. Huh? Why do they do that to you? You go to the army for America, you fight and die and give up your sweat, blood, tears, and life. And you come back and they treat you like dirt. Why? Why? Because you have been without the knowledge of your God, Yahweh, that's why. You forgot your God, Yahweh, that's why. Why you treated like dirt because you turned your back on Yahweh, that's why. Look what's reserved for Israel. Huh? You are Israel. Look what's reserved for you. City from heaven to the sin. From Yahweh himself, full of his light and glory. Read verse 18. Read. And the building of the wall of it was of jasper, and the city was pure gold, like unto clear glass. I have a little gold on to remind you what's coming. Put a little glass on this so you can see that, you know, gold is going to be beat out so thin till you can look through it. See, your enemies don't want to see you inherit no city made out of pure gold. And when you read between verses 13 and 17, you find out that this city is the same size of America. Identical. Yeah, these little long things. Yeah, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, verse 15 tells you about you measure, you measure and, and take calculate those furlongs, you'll find out it's the identical size of America. See when this when this great Jerusalem descends from heaven to the earth, it's got to sit on top of something. <laughs> See, the earth already got something on it. <laughs> this new city got to sit somewhere on the planet. Wonder where it's going to sit. No one thing, it's as big as America. I do know that. And I'm here to bring something on top of this wicked country. Call a holy city. I'm here to establish that great city, that great holy Jerusalem, in the place of the wicked corruption that you see. And 12 tribes of Israel are written on the gates thereof. City of pure gold. I don't want no paper money. I give all the paper money to food. I don't want it. I want gold. 
Go ahead. See, I want to come. I want four. Now, I want all the gold that all the nations got. All the nations got to bring me gold. Take it. Gold. 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 I want no paper. I take paper and buy gold with me. You'll understand after a while that you'll wish you had taken all the money you could get to get you some gold. Then you come see the sun and bring it to me. See, I build this city with it. See, I build this city with pure gold. How many would like to live in a city made out of pure gold? See, but the enemy of Yahweh has to be gold in order for you to live in a city like that. <laughs> I mean, you think the nation's going to sit back out, I mean, the enemy. The enemy is going to sit and watch you live in a city full of gold, pure gold, and just watch you live in. <laughs> it's not enough planes and guns in the world to keep these fools away from you. They'll turn the city into a pawn shop. <laughs> One big gigantic pawn shop. <laughs> but I'm going to accomplish this anyway. <laughs> well, how can how can I do this? And the wicked are around. Well, let's go to Job 18 to find out what's going to happen to the wicked. I have the answer to everything. Right here in the book. And the wicked will rob you. Oh, uh, we'll see, we'll see. If the wicked can do that. Job chapter 18, verse 5. Read. Yea, the light of the wicked shall be put out, and the spark of his fire shall not shine. Verse 6 reads, His light shall be dark in his tabernacle. The wicked churches will be full of darkness. Be no light in there. And all the little light they had in all the churches of earth is going to suddenly turn dark. It's dark now. It's darkness in there. Light is put out. They're wicked. The book says that's what would happen to the wicked. Verse 17. Let's check out what happened to them in verse 17. Read. His remembrance shall perish from the earth, and he shall have no name in the street. Wicked people can name all the streets after themselves they want to. Johnson Street. Baker Street, Swaggart Avenue, <laughs> or Roberts Boulevard. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Smith Avenue, Elvis Presley Boulevard. Martin Luther King Boulevard. <laughs> oh, it, it, don't worry. <laughs> My book tells me that they're going to have no, they're going to end up with no name in the street. Because I'm going to rename all streets on the earth Yahweh Street, Yahweh Avenue. Everything will be Yahweh. The wicked aren't going to have a name. Because the Bible says so. Let's see what else happens to them in verse 18. The wicked. Read. He shall be driven from light into darkness and chased out of the world. That's what's going to happen to the wicked. So that's how we're going to be able to live in a city of pure gold. Because the wicked are going to be chased out of the world. Now, if you don't want to get chased, if you're doing wicked things and don't want to get chased out of the world, what did you better do? Change 
Strange. Second Chronicle seven fourteen. I'll show you what. But you think it's my words? I mean, just me talking from my head. It is in my head because I ate the book. That's how I know everything in it, from Genesis all the way through Revelation. I know the whole book. That's why they can get me on television and ask me anything they want to. I just lay back real nice and sweet and calm and cool because I know the word. I let Yahweh's word just defile them. They can't help me. I'm divine. My mind is divine. Read. If my people which are called by my name. Check out my name. You don't want to get chased out the world, you got to be called by my name. Read. Shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. Unless you meet these conditions, Yahweh does not hear your prayer. Being born in America as well as here, without the knowledge of Yahweh, the earth being empty of the knowledge of Yahweh, you first have to be brought into the knowledge of Yahweh. And after you are taught the name Yahweh, the book says you have to want to be one of his people. You have to be, want to be one of my people. Now see, this is a, this is a, a law to Israel first, then it's to all nations of the earth. I don't care what's your nationality. You have to want to be one of my people to get this reward down here of getting a hearing from heaven. Then after you want to be one of my people, then you have to want to be called by my name. Because that's an if, if, there's a duality. If you do, if you don't. If you don't, you're not going to get healed. If you do, you will. You can't give me money and get healed. You have to go by this prescription here. See, there is a price to pay, but you can't pay me money for the gift I have for you. I will heal you freely, but you have a price to pay. The price to pay is you must accept my name. There is no other name under him. Act 4, 12. Neither is there salvation in any other. For there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. Praise God. Now, we saw in the Catholic magazine and further proven in the Catholic calendar, 800 million people on earth following Catholicism along with is the originator of all of Christianity. All people who say they are Protestants, Baptist, Methodist, Episcopalian, Presbyterian, Evangelical, Fundamentalist, all come from and get their origin from the Catholic Church. They are called Protestants because it comes from the name Protest. And there was a man in the history of the Catholic Church who protested against the rulership of the Pope. What was his name? Martin Luther. Maybe that's why Martin Luther King was protesting. He had a name like that. Martin Luther protested against the rulership and the infallibility of the Pope. Set up a movement, and like everything, like the people followed down today, we have millions of Protestants who to 
this state protest against the movement of the folks. Right now. They don't want to go by the laws of the church. So they call themselves protesters. Protestants. Protest. Ants. They're protest ants. Kids just running all around just like ants protest. They protest everything. The Pope says, have babies. These fools say, birth control. Hmm? So now you have divisions in Christianity, but all of them give off the wrong name. And now we see that at least the Catholic Church is saying, hey, I'm going to reveal and admit that God's secret name is indeed Yahweh. That's his real name. Now I have a question. If 800 million Catholics are taught, in the process of being taught, that God's true name and secret is Yahweh, then how long are they going to call on a name that's not his? You got the vision? So at least you have to give the Catholic Church credit for saying Yahweh is the secret name. Now you got all these millions and millions of protesters busy over the earth like ants who haven't confessed yet publicly and in writing in black and white that indeed the son's name is not Jesus but Yahweh. That's his true name. And I'm going to make the whole earth confess that's his name. So I've already gotten the, the original, the originator of Christianity has confessed that Yahweh is his name and the Pope John Paul II took his picture to show you that the son is indeed black. We got the proof of all of them. Now the rest better shape up. And all of them had better come on and get at my feet. And it's my hand that they had better kiss. And it's at my name that their knees had better bow. That's reality. So here in the book, it tells you there's no other name now. If Yahweh is his secret name, then you got to know the secret to be able to call it. If you don't know the secret, you can't call it. I don't care where you come from. You got to know the secret to be saved. I'm not concerned about all these names you know. I don't I could care less about all these names you know. I'm not concerned. If you want to be saved and not chased out of the world, you're going to have to know this one and only secret thing. For there is no other name. Now, there are millions of names out here, but all those names don't have to be made one. Zechariah 14, now. All proof in the book. You can't be healed otherwise. I'm talking about you being healed now. All right, read. And the Lord Yudhe shall be king over all the earth. In that day shall there be one Lord. Yudhe and his name won. Here it is again. You keep reading who the king over all the earth is, but this a pro it's a statement shall be. That means there's a period where he is not. Though he created it all, somebody else is acting as king. Back around 14. Now, Yahweh shall be king. Over how much there is? In that day there shall be one Lord. 
and his name to one. So whatever name you got in your head, you got to give it up. Because there's only going to be one. What's that name? What's that name? I'm establishing this thing. I'm the one. Is there another? If so, where is he? Back to 2 Chronicles 7 and 14. You're going to be called by my name. You got to humble yourself, pray, seek my faith. And here's a big proposition. You got to turn from what? Your wicked ways. If you have to turn from your wicked ways, then it means a wicked ruler is over the earth. Huh? Or you wouldn't have to turn. coming with the signs that are necessary for you to be healed. As you come and just listen to me, I will begin to heal your condition. I had some that came back last week. It was last week, I believe. Came from Gainesville. I got calls from New York of people that were here uh, 40 days ago. Right in this other room. This place was full. I said, I'm going to heal all your conditions and all of you that have sugar in 30 days you go to your doctor every one of you in this building I told them you go to your doctor and at the end of 30 days you go to them and have your sugar checked and see if I have not healed you but you will have to do what I tell you to do that's the condition no, no money just the condition is do what I tell you to do So here's a letter from a doctor in, in uh, North Florida. It says, written to me, Yahweh Ben Yahweh, regarding Dorothy McDonald. This patient has been under my care for diabetes since the second month of 1982. Her current weight is 137, and that is down from a beginning weight of 179. Her FBS is now at 84, down from 167. She asked for this letter to you so that you could see that her diabetes is now under control as is her weight. Sincerely, the doctor's name and all these things, is, he has MD, PA, WHL, MD, PA, and CB. Well, he is really qualified. <laughs> Now, he had her from 1982 to 1987, five years. Never did get her weight under control in five years. Never did heal her and cure her of her sugar for five years. But he was kind enough to write a letter and admit that. Maybe he knew what I did, maybe he didn't know what I did. But he had to admit that in these last 30 days, a miracle she was He was unable to cause her to lose the weight, but I did. The doctor was able to control her sugar and get rid of it, but I did. And I received calls from New York City, those who were here from New York that had uh, diabetes and sugar, one who spent all her money all these years on sugar and trying to control it, it's all here. All of you. To Yahweh is the Lord the Lord. Whatever your condition, Yahweh made your body. 
And he says, you submit your mind to his will. He promised he would heal you. 